This video is going to explore dialog boxes and menus and ribbons within a window. So to get us started, we're again going to use the Solitaire game. The Solitaire game was originally added to Windows 3.1, the first popular version, as a training tool. It contains certain mouse commands and certain the ways the dialog boxes and the menus are set up that you're going to find in other programs. Menu bar traditional menu bar is located directly underneath the title bar. This one has two items, Game and Help. When you click on a menu, Game, and the choices come down, you're going to notice that there's keyboard shortcuts over to the right hand side. For example, if you need to deal a new game, you can click Game, New Game, but if you do that often, you may learn that the Function 2 key, F2, will do it for you faster. Anytime there's keyboard shortcuts, they'll usually be shown to you in the menu. If you didn't want to choose anything in this menu, you simply click Game to make that menu go away. Once you've brought the menu bar up, you can move back and forth between all the menus, but if you don't want anything, you click one of those menu words to turn it off. Newer programs, like Paint, show Microsoft slowly replacing menus with ribbons. A ribbon is similar to a menu. You can see where it has Home and View. But notice that I don't have words come down. Instead, when I switch from home to view, the choices of icons change. When you get into some of their pro programs like Microsoft Word or Excel, which we'll explore much later in this class, you're going to see not just two or three menus, but literally dozens of, of ribbons that you could choose from. In the current versions, this is the File tab. And a lot of people still refer to it as a menu, although Microsoft is very specific that they call it a tab. It works similar to a menu, and you'll see it only when you have ribbons. You click back on that same file tab, that little blue, in this case, box at the top of it, to make it go away without making a choice. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that program. We're going to come back to Solitaire so we can explore dialog boxes. In the Game menu, if we go to Change Appearance, this will introduce us to our first dialog box. At first glance, a dialog box may seem like a window, because it is in a rectangular shape. There is a close button in the upper right hand corner, there is a title bar across the top. But look closer. There is no minimize nor maximize buttons in the upper right hand corner. There is no control menu in the upper left hand corner. And if you looked at the task bar across the bottom of your screen, this is not a separate task. A dialog box is not a program. It's where you make ch changes without another program. In this case, you're changing the appearance of the card back or the felt underneath the cards within the solitaire game. I can move a dialog box similar to how I move a window, allowing me to see what's underneath. But notice that when I go to the border dial on most dialog boxes, I'm never going to see that change into a two-sided arrow. Generally, dialog boxes cannot be resized. I'm going to go ahead and make my choice and click OK. You're going to see the design on the back of the cards or the felt underneath, whichever I chose, change. I'm going to go back into that same dialog box, Game, Change Appearance. This time when I make my choice, I'm going to point at it and double click. In this case, a double click is a shortcut for two single clicks. I could have single clicked the choice and then come down and clicked OK. In many dialog boxes, you may see that a double click will be a shortcut for two or more single clicks. Another dialog box in the Solitaire game is Game, Options. This is a great train dialog box for training purposes because it has both option buttons and check boxes. Option buttons are circles. For example, where it says draw one, draw three. You'll notice there's an actually a frame around that group. That's called an option group. The circles mean that these are dependent events. If I draw one, by default I will not draw three. Or if I draw three, it deselects draw one. I've got the same situation over here with scoring. And then below I have squares. These squares are called checkboxes. Checkboxes are independent events. Whether or not I display animations, play sounds, show tips, has no bearing on each of the other items. Checkboxes are an on-off situation. You'll see both option buttons and checkboxes in all of your programs. When something's grayed out, you'll notice right here, cumulative is grayed out. I cannot select it. It simply means something else has to be done first. Sometimes the challenge is figuring out what it is you have to do first. In this case, I have to have Vegas scoring. When I have Vegas scoring, I can now use that checkbox for cumulative. 
A dialog box in the bottom right hand corner will always have at least an OK, usually a cancel, and sometimes an apply button. In this case I'm going to go ahead and click OK, which means apply these changes and close the dialog box. Cancel generally means forget that I changed anything, I've changed my mind. Some dialog boxes will have the choice of apply, and apply means apply these changes, but I'm not done, so don't close the dialog box. I'm going to go ahead and get Solitaire out of the way and let's quickly look at the dialog boxes in the Paint program. There aren't as obvious as to where they are in this program, but sometimes when you click on icons like, for example, Edit Colors all the way over here to the right, a dialog box will open up. You'll notice when I'm in this dialog box, this is where I can change what colors are on my color palette in the program. Again, we'll explore this program in more detail in the Windows Accessories unit. Right now, we're more concerned with understanding the dialog box. The dialog box can be moved and it can be has an OK and a cancel button. Clicking the close X in the upper right hand corner in almost all programs is the same as clicking cancel. If I go to the file tab and I choose properties, I'll have another dialog box appear within this program, the image properties. Notice the option buttons similar to what we had in the solitaire program. I could choose to do this in black and white or color, but not both. I could use to use, choose to use inches, centimeters, or pixels, but not all three. So remember both option buttons and check boxes as you work within your dialog boxes.